Thursday. Uh oh, hang on. You know, when we're multi streaming, it's uh, <laughs> it's oh god, hold on. Hey, Han Yin, how you doing? Kara, I hope everything is working. There we go. I am always so happy to see green lights on my screen. I'm really happy to see all you guys in the chat. Get in, say hi. It's kind of a usual usual showtime, although it is my birthday. My wife is with me. We, we, I'm wearing my, I'm wearing my, can you tell it's my birthday in case you could not. And my, my, my wife saw that I was buying myself a birthday present because everybody has to have a t-shirt that they can only wear one day of the year. And so my, my wife wanted one. But she does want to wish everybody a happy career. Yeah. Good luck in your search and your progression. You guys are going to do great. You're in the right spot. Do you see all these, see all these folks happy say birthday. hi? Happy birthday. I know. I took a personal day and everything. How is that? Just to be home with you. I know. My my <laughs> my wife's a teacher, and and it's been uh, difficult. It's, I, it's actually it's been difficult on teachers. It's been difficult on all you parents out there, I'm sure. So I hope everybody is doing and great with the kids. A lot of grand- grandparents are home helping their kids speaking through all of, this remote learning. It's crazy. I know. Speaking of, maybe Nana and Papa are on here too. All right. Well, let's get the show rolling. I got stuff to give away. Questions to answer. I'm sure. Right. All right. Thank you. Love you. Cheers. Thanks, Ooh. Pete. It's okay. Don't worry about spilling on me. I, I don't have Did to wear you this show T-shirt. Them your mug? Oh yes, and I have I have a mug. You'll never guess who got me this mug. Can you see that? The lights. This guy is one awesome husband. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> okay, folks, let's get rolling. What do we got? Care? Oh, we are we're lit up everywhere. Okay. Hey, no. All kidding aside. Thanks for showing up. I got a big day planned for me. But I wasn't going to dish you out of, out, of, out, of, out of helping you. So we moved this to 8 o'clock my time. I, uh, I've had my annual uh, bagel and lox and cream cheese and all that good stuff. And so I'm, I'm ready to roll. So get in. Say hi. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions. And if you've got any room left, let me know what your biggest job search or career development is issue is like is it resume writing interviewing is it is it the search itself is it my career development is it my goal setting is it anything i have that i can give away you got to let me know all right let's get let's get to it and i just want to say thanks to to everybody showing up is really really love having you and uh i just i i I can't thank you enough for being in my community all right anna goldman thank you adam stark Christopher, Keisha, Han Yin, my boot camper, great to see you. Helena, how are you? And mom, yes, mom, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you after. I'll call you after this before my 20-mile run that I'm going to do here in a, in, a, in, a, in, a wee, in a wee bit. And I do, I do feel 28. All right, let's see. Landry, happy birthday. Thank you for that. Mike Elliott, Tony, great to see you. Laura Cobb from down the block. Saul, thank you for the birthday emails. Reem, thank you. Zippy, Zippy, I made you famous. Did you see your video on Tuesday? All right. Uh, Laura Cobb is asking, let me see. This is, uh, you know what? I wish I would have known I was going to get that question, but I will tell you this, and I'm glad my mom is here to hear it. Laura's asking me, what was the favorite gift I've ever received the f- best gift I have ever received was my 40th birthday photo albums. And to call them photo albums is not doing them justice. These were major, major scrapbooks. My mother put <clears throat> two, actually, two volumes together. The first 20, the second 20. And as a matter of fact, if you guys don't have this book, in this book, my goal my goal setting inspirational book out of reach but insight using goals to achieve your impossible i actually refer to that gift and it was in a dream that i had although it was a reality because my mom made it i have no idea how long it took her to to make it that was the best gift i have ever gotten and the best gift i can ever give is my attention and i give it all the time 
So those are the two on those. Beth, what do you got here? I am soaking up every minute. I, <laughs> you sent me a music video. Awesome. I, I'm not crying yet. I will, I'm sure. You guys will make me, I'm sure. Pablo, Chris Reed. Chris Reed, got your story. Hope you got my response. Thank you for that, my boot camper. Karen M., I think that's Karen M., my boot camper. Hey to you. Kat Harrison. Kat Harrison, you are so awesome. And that video that you sent me and your, your, just your discussion of your experience with us is one of my most prized possessions ever because it just makes me feel so great to see it. Really, really something. Daisy, how are you? Ashley Sipe. Bob Prather, Medina, hey, so, does anybody have a question? All right, Cat Harrison Peterson, let me see, Hanya28, all right. I'm starting to build a good reputation in a niche segment in my industry. Any tips to preserve my good standing? So, Cat, I, uh, I will say this till the day I kick, and I think reputation building, brand building, which hopefully you will show up on September 10th. Uh, we got a personal branding event at my normal live office hour slot. Is this, everyone, this is not just about Kat's reputation. It's about anything that you do. And I want you to think about yourself and I want you to think about other people who you follow, admire, learn from, and so on. Consistency is the most important thing. Con consistency. I didn't say quality, although quality we like, you know, we, we, we want that, right? We want you to deliver quality stuff, quality communication, quality pitches, quality what collateral, whatever it is that you're using to build your reputation. But showing up and being there is the most important thing. If you notice and you take me for example, but you think it doesn't have to be me. You can th consider anybody. I show up every Thursday. I show up every Tuesday morning in a recorded fashion for you, right? I write you a digest every Tuesday, every week, every Thursday, except for some a few rare exceptions, I show up here for you guys. It, the level of consistency, people want you present, people want to know you're dedicated, people want to know you're committed, that supersedes your game that day. It does. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I want to I provide quality insight. I want you to provide quality content into the world or, or, or whatever it is, the relationships that you're building. But our goal here at the Mile Walk Academy, and Stacy, our content manager, she knows this, consistency first, quality is, is 1B. And, and, and that is ultimately what builds your reputation and keeps your reputation over time. And even, here again, in this book, I talk about the day in and day out. What you do every day matters more than what you do every once in a while. And it's great to give a great presentation. It's great to have a nice promotion. It's great you know, to, to cross a finish line. But it's all the stuff that you do every day. So Kat, it's, it's whatever it is that you are doing to show up every day in whatever form that is. So if it's showing up with people, it's showing up with people. If it's writing an article, once a month or once a week or, uh, and publishing it on LinkedIn and, and then it's about continually circulating it. All of you can do the kinds of things that I do that are tailored for what it is you do and for whom you do it. But that's, that's what I think about that. And Kara is telling me uh, that you're talking about, and you added, especially when projects stumble due to things that are out of my control. I would focus on what's in my control. One of the things uh, we talked about in our uh, in in my leadership program, actually, the last se session that we just had, about um, every time you are dealt any situation, your best reactions will come from immediately asking the question, "What can I do with this right now?" So while something might be outside of your control, what is it that you can do to make it better? What is it that you can do to own the responsibility even though it might have been somebody else's responsibility, even though it might have been someone else's, and I hate this word, fault by somebody's definition. 
Maybe the weather it hurt you. Maybe maybe it was you know somebody decided to pull out of a project. Whatever it is, what can I do with this right now? Maybe it's maybe it's a rejection you got from a from a letter you sent to somebody, or a cover letter you sent, or a networking message that you reached out. What can I do with this right now? And take responsibility for making it making it better. I genuinely feel like if your attitude is pointed in the direction of of, of what you can do. And by the way, and I, I said this to my leaders, I'm going to say it to you guys. When I said, what can I do with this right now? Or what can I do right now? The rhetoric matters. What can I do? Can I do now? Is It matters when you talk to yourself that way. If it's, well, what am I going to do now? That's not the same thing. Or what now? That's not the same thing. Because the can I do is what instills the responsibility in you. And I think it's about ownership. I think it's about ownership. I think it's about consistency. I think it's about showing up every day. And if the projects get canned and the budgets get chiseled, and we deal with this stuff all the time. What, how do you max out the resources that you have that you can control? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. So I hope that helps. Just love having you in the programs. I really do. Sherry, great to see you. Modest Vir Do we have any other Virgos? Can I? Virgo powers unite. I got, you know, I actually thought I, it was your, the chat was zipping so fast. But one of my favorite mugs that I probably would have had in my hand today, had my, my beautiful wife not given me this, this gift, is Dan and Demand. If you are here, and I actually, I thought I did see you. Uh, gave me a, a Virgo cup that I absolutely love that I, I drink out of quite a bit. <laughs> so I, I just, I love it. All right, let's see. Petra, Adam Stark, are you doing teaching session today? Or are we, you ask away, buddy. This is about you. This is about you. Nikki Rose, I'm trying to have a great birthday. Steve W., thanks. And Tia, great to see you, my boot camper. Daisy, thank you for that. Ihaz, Bob, Bob Ashman, great to see you the other day on the camera. <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, if you guys don't know this, and I'm assuming you assumed, I'm a firstborn, as you can imagine. So yes, I made. Uh, I made my mom a mom. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Now I got them on the chat. All right, Hanyin, thank you for that. 30, uh, let's see, 54, feeling, feeling 28, you, you bet. MCK, fellow Virgo, love it. Oh, God, 54 watching. <laughs> John Paul, Shandrei. I know, do you guys, I, you should have seen some of the, the stuff that I wanted to buy. Beth Metro, Melissa Gaines, how are you? Sean Slocum. My buddy from the PRCC, how you doing, pal? Say hi to the guy, the gang. Wrong Lee, Dan C. Yes, there you go, Dan and Demand. This guy gave me one of my favorite coffee mugs of all time. LinkedIn user whose name I don't know from Montreal, great to see you, Jay the Kid, hi. Laura Cobb, okay, let me see. Anybody got any questions? William, Dan, Garrett Smith, and Farah. Oh my God, great to see you guys. Great to see you. Frank, Omesh, oh my God. Rocco. So we have this, we have this fam chat. Uh, I have three siblings. I have, my parents are both alive, thank the Lord. And I have three awesome siblings. And I have a wife, and then there's three in-law, in-laws, a sister-in-law and two brother-in-laws who are fantastic. And I have nine nieces and nephews, and we have one chat string called the fam chat. And uh, usually I wake up every morning to about 38 or 40 text messages. And this morning, I had to text them all the live office hours slash birthday celebration link. And so I think a few of them might have showed up. Brother, happy to have you. Anka, thank you. Miss Marie from the other side of the pond. Dean, Madison, you guys are awesome. George, oh my God. Okay, hey, Mark, do you know many people who can have a B-Day party in the summer? You, us boys. All right, come on. You guys are awesome. Any questions? Here we go. Adam Stark, when you plan your day and long-term stuff, how do you know, decide how much time you'll put into each task or subtask? I'm always struggling 
with overestimating and underestimating. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple. I'm gonna I'm gonna solve a bunch of problems here. So Adam Stark. Okay, for that great question, I'm giving you my $400 Career Accelerator program, which is gonna have the answer to all your questions in it. But I'm not gonna cheat everybody else because I wanna give you a little something here. But Adam Stark, you need to send an email to support at milewalk.com and say, Kara, Andy gave me the Career Accelerator program. It's five modules. It's, I think, 400 bucks. It's a $4,000 course. No, it's just $397. It's all yours. And it's gonna help you with everything you just asked me there. But for everyone else who is not yet does not yet have that course, it is about uh, I, I plan a strategy. Looks like this is what the year is going to look like. There's two primary things I'm going to work on. For me, they're projects related to job searching, the boot camp, or leadership. My monthly subscription, my monthly coaching subscription. All loads, re all roads lead to those. Every project that we do is about supporting the business health of that and supporting the community. So every project is broken down into quarters and then months, and then I have to plan each week. Each week, certain things come from those project plans that because I, I have deadlines that I impose based on a number of factors. It has uh, almost nothing to do with how much money or revenue we're trying to generate. I know that might sound silly to you, but I just don't run my life that way. I run it based on, hey, it's December, people need help with goal setting. Hey, it's January, people need help with job searching. That kind of stuff. So we we try to support you that way. So I, I have projects, you have projects, whatever those are. I wanna clean the house, right? I wanna clean the garage, I, whatever the project is. So I look at my deadlines, I look at my work plans that I've put together that are independent of, of time and space and any of that stuff. There's just things that need to be done. And then every project that I do, this is really important for you guys to realize this is why we get so much done, is each project has a bare minimum that needs to be accomplished. There's an, a very clear list of things that need to be done. Okay, it's not a to-do list; it's a project list. It says you got to do this. You gotta you gotta put some social media together to announce that you're gonna be there. You have to put the content together for the show. You gotta put the whatever. You gotta give them the workbook, right? You gotta make sure that there's something to buy if they want more help, right? Like these bare minimums. And then there's another layer that says, okay. Uh, if time allows, or or we want to go, you know, the the next the next step, kind of a stretch goal, then add all these other things, and then if I'm really cooking, maybe I can get to these additional super sweet to have things. So there's a bare minimum; it has to be done. So as I look at my activities for the week, there's things that I put on my calendar that are about my personal and professional growth. So it's like paying myself first. I put training on my calendar. I put the projects on my calendar. I, I know what goes in which slots based on my level of energy, what's going to require a lot of energy, what's going to give me energy, when I'm most creative, and so on. So I put I make blocks of time to, to, to work on certain activities for the projects. And then I work them, and my deliverables are based in the time slots. So if I'm, I have a creative session at 5.30 in the morning uh, that I know is going to go from either 5.30 to 6 or 5.30 to 8 or 5.30 to 7 or whatever it might be, I know that based on that hour and a half, hour, whatever, there's going to be a certain amount that I'm going to get done. But I also know that on any given day, there are certain things that absolutely have to be done. So the combination of allocating the time, making sure the deliverables get done, looking at the, the short-term and the long-term deadlines. And I also have slots every day on my calendar that are for things that are not due that week because certain things, you don't want to leave everything to the end. You want to work on certain things and, and move them along. And then we also have the, we also have what, the consistency items, like there's videos that we want to release to you. There's messages I want to send to you. There's always time allocated to do those maintaining of the relationship items. So we, we, we classify all this stuff. But it, it's also about planning it for in the month in advance, it planning it the week in advance, planning it the night before, and then working the process. I go through all of this in the Career Accelerator program in Module 4 in the Organizational Tactics. Enjoy. That's a great question. Stephanie Smith, thank you. Don from Ohio, I love it. Thank you. Julius from LinkedIn, thank you for that.
Alay, thank you. Nancy Griffin, how are you? Thank you for the email that was brought a big smile to my face. Adrian, Kara's with me. Shantu, Ifioma, Oma, love that name, from LinkedIn. So we got some LinkedIn and Facebookers here. Great to have you guys as well. All right, let me see. Oh my God, Hillary, Anne Marie, Annie Norris, how you doing? Coming back, early boot camper. Mago, how are you? I just discovered you a few days ago. Well, get watching those videos. It's a lot of fun. Irma, Paula, Kelly, James, Snezana, my Instagram. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, two videos a day, plus my inspirational quotes, plus other good stuff, right? YouTube, we get like one video a week. But Instagram is so, so fun. Please connect up with me there in LinkedIn, in wherever you want. Donna, our favorite actress, flying Uber tuber, Nikki, Hart, Uzoma, from the other side of the pond. Ralph, thank you for that message. I think you commented on my LinkedIn picture this morning. Do you guys have any questions? Noel, John, Abhishek, Luke, Pauline Warrior, hey, my boot camper, Bradley, hey. I'm uploading a lot of resume, no response yet. All right. Ashley, can you talk about dealing with disappointment? You bet. All right. Ashley site. So a couple things. Uh, let's be philosophical. And let's be tactical. Most of the times we're disappointed. What's the source? Expectations. What's the greatest source of stress in all our lives? And by greatest source of stress, I mean the stuff you deal with on a day in and day out basis or constant or chronic pain that you're feeling. So I'm not talking about acute pain like my boyfriend dumped me. My girlfriend broke up with me. Uh, I got a divorce. Uh, I had a death in the family. Those are all acute issues that are rare. But most of it, the disappointment in our lives ha has to do with the fact that we have expectations about how the world should be. And of course, the world is not what we think it ought to be, which leads us to stress and disappointment. You cannot be disappointed if you don't have any expectations. Now, I'm not saying I want you to have absolutely zero expectations for everything in your life. What I would prefer is that in any pursuits that you have, you put a stake in the ground, you shoot for something, but you don't let your heart get attached to the outcome. I say that again. In this book, which I give away for free, if you guys want it, um, that my mind, my mind is open to any possibility, but my heart is attached to no outcome. And I know it sounds lofty, but if you can live that, you won't be disappointed. Um, what are examples that I tend to use? So, so if we have a promotion like we did, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, where we were offering my job search bootcamp, my signature job searching program, for uh, for a discount, we were putting a lot of goodies in it, and then I could have an expectation of how many people I hope enroll, right? Which generates revenue for the company, which allows us to grow the business, but. I don't ever, I, I just stop doing that stuff. I, 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 I find that if you focus on what you were fashioned to do, look for the joy in the doing, whatever it is. So making the widget, talking to the friend, whatever it is that you are doing at any moment in time, if you can be completely present and focused on enjoying the act itself, all the outcomes, the accolades, the finish lines, so to speak, they just... They just appear. And so the way that I deal with disappointment is the first thing is I try to live my life so that I am never disappointed. Really, I, I mean, I, I do that. Now, if something happens that would cause me disappointment, I go back to what I was mentioning to Kat about what can I do with this right now? So I'm immediately, so I didn't get invited to the party. Okay, I'll have my own. Right, uh, my friend doesn't want to be friends anymore. That's okay. I'll cherish the time we had together, and I'll move on, and I'll make a new friend, kind of thing. But I mean, literally, that is that is how I am. That is how I am wired. As a matter of fact, Ashley Sipe, you know what we're gonna do for you? We're gonna put you in my leadership course, three months, okay? And and the sessions that are in the leadership program, you just go to the most recent replay on thriving during a difficult time. That was the title of it, but what it ultimately meant was how do I deal with anything that's difficult? And so we went through the whole battery and 
and you're really gonna love this, because ne next month's session is on dealing with difficult people. So, Ashley site, please email us. We will give you a three-month pass. You can knock your socks off and learn all you want about how to deal with disappointment. There you go. Love to have you. Support at milewalk.com. Beth, how are you? Christina, Sharonda, John G. My brother from another mother. Hope you're doing great. Teresa, Hanyin, we should have a session on building confidence. Hanyin, first session leadership program, which you have, is on building confidence. Three screens. <laughs> hey, Laura, feel free to take a picture of whatever that looks like. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to give you one here. William, here you go. William, first thing, my biggest issue is knowing my purpose. I have tried to be as many things as possible, but, n but uh, uh, now I don't know where to focus. Okay, couple of things really quick. First thing, check out my video on how to find your gift. It is. It will be the best 16 minutes, aside from these minutes, that you spend today. Okay, it, it will help you trace back in your life. Uh, and by the way, I, I do mean gift because I and I always say to you, don't let what you can do stand in the way of what you were meant to do. OK, don't let what you can do prevent you from doing what you were meant to do in order for you to do what you were meant to do. You need to know what it is you were meant to do. The clues are there. You've lived a, you know, a good long life, right? Like I, like I have. And if you trace back to what that common denominator is among all the things that you've ever done, no matter how differently they look, you will find the common thread. That's what you were fashioned to do. Okay, it is. It is. And, and whether it's in your profession or not, there is a piece of it somewhere in what you do every day. So as an example, in my life, going all the way back to when I was a child, and all the different things that I did in school and sports and activities and extracurriculars and whatever. It didn't matter what I did. The thing that was always most important to me was helping my friends, teaching my friends, showing them how to do what I was doing, learning from them. And it didn't matter whether it was picking up a ground ball or how to fi figure out a math problem. Right? It just didn't matter. And then when I went in, in, into college and I earned a degree that I then went into consulting, it wasn't about implementing technologies or changing business processes. It was about coaching the staff and helping the clients and teaching them. And then I became a recruiter. Same kind of thing. And now I'm a coach. Anyway, it's all the same all the way. So that's, that's one thing you got to look. I tell you how to find that Okay, in, in, the, in the video. And then the other thing that I would do is if you if it's too big, if the, if the sky is too big and blue, and if there's just too many possibilities and and, and too many choices uh, makes it difficult for any of us, it's better to narrow it down. Then what I say, and this goes for anybody who is 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 looking to change careers, maybe you're looking to change jobs, maybe you're not sure what direction or path to pursue. There, I want you to imagine literally a line. Okay, above the line are things that will help you determine your path. I wish I, I wish I actually had my slide and I could pull it up for you. But basically, there are things that will help you determine your path based on what it is you enjoy to do. And what you enjoy to do has different dimensions and directions that you can look at it from. The size of the company, do I like big companies? Do I like small? If you don't really care, then it's not a, that's not an issue. The kind of roles that you enjoy, the location that you're looking for, the type of, you know, all those kind of things. So what can you do at your desk that will help you determine which path you should pursue? Then there are other things that you want that make you happy, that drive you, that are not something that you can, you can evaluate it at the comfort of your own desk. So what do I mean by that? Well, for example, you can figure out what types of companies you want to pursue, maybe what kind of industries you want to pursue, what kind of role you might like just from just from from thinking about it but you won't know specifically that you want to work at that company until you meet the people right so it might be important for you to work with great people but you won't know uh before uh, until you get in and talk with them that that's the place for you those are those are not parameters that you need to be worrying about as you start searching for your career your role your job or whatever it is that you want to do next 
if that makes sense. So there are things that, that will help you determine the trajectory and the route. And if so if you can't determine what your gift is and what your purpose is, at a minimum, you can determine some parameters that will reduce your choices, which is what you want. And once you get in motion, I also say you never get it until you get into it, right? It's, you know, everybody's got a plan, but once you get into it and you take a step and you take one step, you're that much smarter than when you were sitting at your desk putting your plan together. So, so, and you are, you are in, I think you were in the boot camp. If you're in the boot camp, it, we did this in one of the booster sessions where I went into detail about how to triangulate this. If you're not in the boot camp, I know you're in my leadership program. I know that for sure. And if you are, um, if you are not in the boot camp, I will give you access to that session so that you can see it. We'll figure out some way. Uh, I know that's going to be a tricky thing because it's a program, but let me know. But but that's that's what I would do there. It really it really is. So I hope that helped. Oh, you guys are great, brother Rock. Got out of bed early. Thanks, Karen Los, Gene, Mohammed, Mary Wade. How are you? Uh, what's this? How to present an atypical? Re you know what? We're, you know what we're going to do for you, LinkedIn user. Uh, I wish we had your name. Maybe Kara can trace this back. Here's what we're going to do. I'm not even going to answer this. I'm just going to give you uh, my resume writing workshop, which is going to be $297 starting on Friday. But we're going to give it to you because right now we have a bonus session in the program that will answer that question. Can you just do me a favor and Email us at my, uh, support at milewalk.com and we'll, we'll give you the program. All right. Ke Kiara, my, my fellow triathlete from the other side of the pond, thank you for that. Janice Coleman, Jean, Jim, Laura, seriously sobbing, just got the book. Awesome. Yeah, the Out of Reach, the Out of Reach book. I don't know if you guys know this. This, this, um, this book I wrote in um in a week as a speech that i gave to about 400 or so uh college collegiate scholarship students and faculty and people in the, the affiliations and those kind of things and they wanted me to the topic for this they gave me the subject they said will you come and i was the opening speaker the in, inspirational speaker they wanted uh, me to talk about leadership for life, setting and accomplishing your goals. And when I thought about goal setting and talking to you know, students that were 18 to 22 predominantly, I didn't want to make it about you know some short-term solution that was going to help them get through college because some of them were graduating. So I talked about uh, the principles that are ageless, timeless, genderless, professionless, doesn't matter if you go to work on a baseball field or in a skyscraper, that how do you get everything you want out of life and use goals to do that. So I gave the speech and then I decided that I could put this out into the world and, um, and it's, it's, uh, it was really a lot of fun. It's a fast read. The speech was only 48 minutes, so you can read the book quickly. But it's uh, it's it's really a lot of fun, and we give it away free if you if you want to grab it. Biggest issue: negotiating deal in my favor. <laughs> How do you deal with leaving college after? Let's get you up here, flying Uber tuber. How do you deal with leaving college after two to three years and going to work for personal family reasons on your resume? This is a relatively straightforward one. Uh, in your education section, just talk about what you did, not what you don't have. Meaning, you have college credit. Did you study, you know, studied whatever you studied? They're going to say, well, did you earn your degree? You're going to say, no, I don't have it. That's all. I would not, you know, I would not make a big deal out of it. I would, if you have college courses that you've taken, then put them on there or put your number of credits or you could, if, 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 if you just want to, if, if you don't ever intend to go back, that's perfectly okay. In your education section, just put, just put what you took. If you do intend to go back, you could say returning to attain degree target, you know, completion date of, and you could do that. Don't make a big deal out of it. It isn't. It's more of, it, it's a bigger deal to you than it is to employers. Anka, how to regain confidence in applying for jobs after 
receiving constant rejections, I want you to head to the video that I have out there on how to stay positive in your job search. Uh, Anka, it's, uh, it, 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 it focuses on, again, controlling what you can control. So a lot of times we get unhappy and anybody gets unhappy for a couple of reasons. And let's not get into the happiness is an all the time internal thing. It is a state of mind. It's not a place you go. So, but forget that for a second. I understand what you're saying. I'm not. I'm applying for jobs, and I'm not. I'm not getting callbacks. The the issue typically when somebody is unhappy is number one their outcome expectation that you expect to get a response, but also that you're focusing your your energy and focusing your expectations on things that are outside of your control. So let me be really specific. When all of you submit a resume into an applicant trashing system, okay, that's what those are. You have absolutely no control over whether your resume is seen and you have maybe a 3% chance of it actually being seen, let alone being invited for an interview. So you don't have much control over that. You don't have any control over that person deciding whether they want to talk to you. You don't have any control over whether they've already hired somebody for the position or maybe have candidates in their candidate recruitment pipeline that they're interviewing. None of that is in your control. What's in your control? Your, your, what's in your control is sending your resume out through whatever mediums you can now. What I would say is there are different metrics that you should focus on that will number one, improve the health of your job search, improve your results, improve your esteem and your confidence because you will be focusing and obsessed with the things you can control. So what are some examples of these? Well, I can't control whether somebody sees my resume in an applicant tracking system or calls me, but I can control the companies I target I can control the people I reach out to. I could research anybody I want. I could send anything to anybody I want. You can, okay? So target companies, people that I identify where I'm going to actually send a message to and my resume to, where somebody's going to get an email from me. You can, you can control the, the resume. You can control the cover letter. You can control your networking message. If you obsessed over these kinds of things, your confidence would go up. You would start to get responses because you're putting yourself in a much better position to do that. And one of the things, the best thing that you can do for yourself, watch that how to stay positive during your job search video. But also, Anka, I would highly recommend that you get in my job search challenge, which is free. It's a five-part video course. It's free. You can enroll now. It's not going to be free forever. We're actually pulling it off the shelf here soon. We're, we're going in a different direction as far as some of our, our, our free offerings are concerned. But right now it's available. I would sign up immediately. I would do, it's, a, it's five days. We, we facilitate uh, it over five days. You get it inside the Mile Walk Academy training system. It's free. And then I, I basically bring you along throughout the week. And you can start today, and it's five consecutive days, and, and it, it teaches you how to actually job search. When Keep in mind, folks, when you are submitting your resume in an applicant trash, uh, trashing system, you are applying for jobs. That's not job searching. Okay, what I described just now briefly, that's job searching. And, and, and putting your resume in an applicant tracking system is not job searching. So, so Anga, we got to get you focusing on the things you can control, getting your outflow going, and all that good stuff. That will, that will raise your confidence level because you will start getting responses. And then you can do something with those. And in that job search challenge, I don't, I don't simply say, here's how you identify companies. Here's how you identify people. Here's what to say to those people. Here's how you send your stuff to them. I also, in the last session, say, here's all the problems you're going to have. And here's everything you need to do whenever you encounter them. So it's, it, it's really helpful. Really, check it out. All right. How's everybody doing? Mike, thank you for that. Jay the Kid, what's the best way to tell employers that you can't do something? Example, I'm autistic and can't present, but can do everything else in, in the job description. So there's various ways of handling this. So if you do have any kind of medical issue uh, or physical issue or any kind of uh, handicap, whatever it might be that would prevent you from actually doing the job. So there's a, 
there's some differences here. There's, hey, my arm doesn't work. I can't physically do the manual labor, so I can't I can't work in you know in in that area in the warehouse or whatever. If you if you can't do the job, that's that's one thing, and I would try to find jobs that you you can do. If it's a situation where you won't be able to do something that they're requesting in an interview, I would simply explain, they're going to see this, right? They say, hey, we want you to make a presentation and you're a little concerned because you're autistic. I would say to them, is there a way that we could accommodate uh, some, some issues that I have that what's the most important part about uh, giving the presentation? Now, there's a couple things here that you need to be sensitive to. And I think we also need to be sensitive to the employers as much as I beat up on them. Uh, if, if they're saying, well, hey, we just want to see you know, your, your communication with us and your organization and, and, and how you think through things, if that's the issue, then I would say, is there, a, is there an alternate way we could do that? Perhaps I could you know, write out the presentation or I could build the slot, you know, how, whatever it is, is there an alternate way I could perform this? Because, and I'm assuming that this is not a situation that would cause the company harm if you had to go out and present something to their customers and you were unable to make a sales pitch or something like that. If it is part of the job, then I would, I would recognize that as well and be sensitive to that and say, are there alternate jobs in your organization where I wouldn't be required to do that as part of the job function. I think we need to be fair, right? We need to be fair to you and we need to be fair to the employers. So there's, you know, you have three different scenarios that you need to cover, but only one of those I think is truly worth, you know, communicating with the potential employer about to say, hey, is if, if the ultimate goal is to see how I think the organization, the way I present the story and so on, then is there an alternate way that we can do this? For you, Jay, and everyone else, I do actually have a very good, very detailed video on how to give a presentation in a job interview. So I talk about the content and all that good stuff. I talk about body language and, and everything. So so try, try, try that. I hope, I hope that helps. And as a matter of fact, Jay, I don't know if you are in because I don't know your your YouTube handle but I would be happy to give you my interview co coaching collection it's like I don't know maybe six eight hundred bucks worth of, of training I'm happy to give you that for free if you already have that and you uh, and you'd want something else then let us know what you would be interested in. And anybody who I give a resume course to or an interview collection suite of courses to or anything like that, if you would rather have my job search boot camp, uh, you can either choose that, you can either take the, the course I, I, I'm offering to you or I'll give you a $200 off the retail price of the boot camp. So it's, it's, it's a good deal e either which way. So Jay, email us at support at malwalk.com and let's get you those interview courses if you, if you don't have them. And if you do, you just explain to us who you are and we will be able to look you up. Hope that helps. Ian, hey to you, Mago, hi. Former job, not working right now, was in human resources for a small school district, central office, but admin assistant title was business secretary. Okay, well, good luck to you. I mean, I hope, uh, I hope with the schooling, the way things are going, that things really pick up. Melissa Gaines, oh, look at you. Getting lots of info interviews and good connections report, few formal interviews, hope. I'm not even sure what to say. You gotta be more specific, my boot camper. Ricky, Gene, what's the best subject line to put in emails you send when prospecting? Gene, check out my video on subject lines. By the way, I know I say this often. If there's ever anything that you all need related to something specific like what Gene just asked, like subject line. All you need to do is head to Google, type my last name, La Civita, and subject, subject line. La Civita Confidence, La Civita Cover Letter, whatever, any of that stuff. All the videos will pop up at the top in Google, and trust me when I tell you that there, whatever you need is there's something I've shot or written or created a booklet or whatever for, so, so give that a try. Candace La Savita, my sister-in-law, how you doing? Boy, I, I think the fam chat text worked this morning. My wife is laughing at me in, in the background. She does that during the shows. I don't know if you could hear her. 
Uh, I know, I saw that. Garrett is my wife's son, and Farah is his lovely girlfriend, in case you guys were wondering. Uh, okay, hey, 843. If you guys are loving this, click the click the like button. Click the uh, click the thumbs up button on whatever platform you're on. <laughs> Martin, hey Andy, what's your view on listing academic degrees and industry certifications on business cards and email signatures? List them all. I would list none. Uh, so my view on um, on business cards is. Name, rank, and serial number. That's about it. And uh, unless you know you are uh, building, you know, patio decks and gazebos and all the other things where you might want to put a little menu of your items on the back that where what you do, what your company does, I would leave all the accolades off my business card. I really would. I don't think it buys you anything. I don't think. And, and by the way, I mean I'm proud for you for your education you should be proud of your certifications and all that good stuff and i i will go you one better because you didn't you didn't ask me this but i think a lot of people are going to want to know on your resume uh the uh yes i care, care things on your resume uh i i i recommend that at the top you only have your name don't put any other symbols and things after it. Don't put any letters. Don't put junior. Don't put senior. Don't put CPA, MBA, PMP, CCIE. Don't, don't put any of that stuff. And then you create a career profile. And when you, when you write your career profile, you only put select accolades at the end of the career profile. So if you are, if you do have an MBA, you know, received MBA from Harvard, concentration in uh, and PMP certification blah blah that's it if you if you've got seven or eight certifications if you've got seven or eight skills you only need to list a couple of the very very top most important ones and then what I would do is at the very bottom of the resume I might have a skills or certification section if you have that many of them if there's just a few I would put them in the education section but Martin, that, that's what I would do there. For, for those of you who are not on my email list, uh, we did a, I did a brand new resume writing workshop. It's got four parts to it. There's the insider's view, how somebody looks at your resume exactly as they go through it, all the 25 or 30 questions that they ask themselves. Maybe it might even be more than that. As they go through your resume, and then how do you write each section of the resume? And that we did free, but I've packaged it all up. I've got the slides together, the booklets together, the word templates and everything. And then I added into that program uh, an extra video on resume exceptions. I'm a contractor. I'm returning to the workforce. I'm, you know, I've changed career, what, whatever it might be. Uh, titling issues, other things like that. So there's a whole video on that. Then there's a few or three other bonus videos that have almost 200. It's, it's a lot of, of resume frequently asked questions answered in video. So you have those. And then you have some other goodies you can get in the Facebook group and the LinkedIn groups, which are private. Uh, all of that, as of tomorrow at 5 o'clock, is going to be 300 bucks or 297 You can get it now for 97 and if you're on my email list, you got an email about it. We didn't tell anybody else. I mean, it's basically went to just the people on my email list. We haven't put it anywhere. Uh, I think we put it on the Milewalk Academy site. And then tomorrow before Kara knocks off her workday, she's going to change the price. So if you're interested in getting all of that, uh, if I haven't given it away to you already, uh, grab it. Because it's it's we are going to reset the price. I mean, we and then we're moving on to something else. So So definitely, if you're interested, it is... Even if you are not writing your resume, it is something you should have. It really, it really is. You will never go wrong having it. The amount of content in there, especially with all the added bonuses that I put in, is pretty, is pretty, is pretty cool. And it's the freshest stuff that I've been teaching lately. So I hope that helps. Dean, my boot camper, what do you need? What do you consider to be the top five points in due diligence in reviewing a company or franchise opportunity? Love this. Okay. All right, Dean, great question. Top five points of due diligence in reviewing a company or franchise. All right, and I will run fast today. Do you know what it's like to run 20 miles? I'm sure some of you have done marathons, as have I. 
but it's it's hot. It's like ninety degrees already. I mean, like it's crazy. Mm. Okay, so here when I look at a company, this is what matters to me. And Dean, I'm talking to you as an executive, but basically this should matter to everybody. The company itself, I want to understand what the company's where the company is in the product and service it offers. Okay. So it and everything that goes along with it. Meaning, you know, what is it that you offer? And as when you're looking at the product or the service, where are you in the market and what are your goals and what's your direction and how do you expect to grow? Now, you can grow by selling more, hiring more salespeople. You can grow by acquiring other companies. You can write all of those things. Now, I genuinely favor, this is a personal opinion because it goes to the stability of the organization for, and, and I'm also thinking about me personally. Now, it's great that companies want to acquire and acquire and acquire, but we all know that, right, when companies start acquiring companies, there's uncertainty around the employees themselves. So to reduce one of the risks, if I have not joined that organization already, I would be interested in recognizing what their product and service is in the in the market, where are they? And then two, what is their growth strategy? Now, there's nothing wrong with a combination of um, organic and acquisitions, assuming they are the acquiring company, okay? Usually you, and, and, and if they are the acquiring company, then this leads me to my third, third issue. So product and services, growth strategy, and then as they're, as they're growing, what is their, um, what is their long-term direction as far as it, re it relates to my role? So am I personally being hired into an area that's strategic? So for example, telecommunication companies, right? As they were going through and changing their signaling systems over, they were changing their networking infrastructures over, they were doing all this. Well, they had a lot of legacy systems that they were maintaining until they can build the new systems. Am I being hired in to maintain the legacy system or am I being hired in, you know, in, 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 to get into the front of the boat to figure out where we're going and implement the new technologies, the new strategy, the new, the new product? I once, uh, as a recruiter, supported an organization that did two things. They had a behavioral analytics arm and they had a networking infrastructure arm. And what happened was I always was very careful about who we were recruiting for, meaning which arm of the business, and I always wanted to be in their bread and butter. Turns out that company publicly traded, uh, uh, bifurcated itself, basically divested one of the arms off. So I was just, I was very careful about that. Uh, am I, the question I'm asking is, am I being invited or recruited into a strategic area? Okay, so, so those, are th those are three biggies. Then for me, personally, it's all about the people. What kind of people am I surrounding myself with? Are they go-getters? And you know, Does high tide lift all boats? Are we all gonna get better and all that good stuff, right? And then the, the fifth thing that I, that I look at is, uh, am, I, am, I gonna be, am I gonna be paid fairly? Meaning, meaning is my structure, by the way, uh, let me be really clear on this. this. This could be a whole session in and of itself, this last point I'm going to make. We all talk about, and I want for all of you to get paid the most money that you possibly can. I want you to walk into work feeling I am well compensated. I love what I'm doing. I love who I'm doing with it. I'm paid fairly. Now, when I look at compensation, I, I might be in the minority, I am more concerned about the fairness of the pay structure and whether it's in alignment with the behavior my company wants to elicit from me. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I'm being incented to do certain things, then if I'm doing those things, I wanna be paid well for it. I don't wanna be incented for one thing while you're asking me to do another. Okay, so if you're a seller and it's important that you go and you grow new accounts and that's more important to your co to your company and your company says hey Andy it's more important that you go get new accounts for us because we have to balance out our portfolio of 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 accounts of clients because because you know we have way too much reliance on this one organization over here and if anything should happen to them we're going to we're going to crumble okay well then you need to pay me twice as much in commission if i get a new client it's harder work right i have to research more i have to it takes longer to sell it and so on 
don't pay me an even amount for everything. Otherwise, I'm going to just go where the sales are easy. That kind of stuff. So if it's, this is important to you, or don't take me away from my ability to sell and work on these other projects if you're not going to pay me for them. That's not a fair pay structure. So I'm looking at is what are the goals of the company? What are my goals as an individual? And is my compensation in alignment with that? These are all the things that lead to, to happiness in an employee. So as I'm going into the organization, is that stuff in order? Now, I, I could go all day. And Dean, you're in the boot camp. I have, uh, I have stuff in the boot camp for you that's very tailored to uh, it, I, we 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 packaged it in with small to medium sized companies and what you need to evaluate, but there th- th- that video and that session is an extension of what I'm talking about and how you get at that information. So let me leave you with that. I would access that. It's in the interviewing section of the of the job search boot camp. So 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 check that out. By the way, as a uh, just as another message, I mean I mentioned the resume workshop is. Um, is is on 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 a, on a pre offer sale right now. I have a boot camp private group coaching session tomorrow with people uh, who are in my job search boot camp. If you are if you miss that promotion and are interested in getting in the boot camp, you get everything. You get everything right away. You get all the online support from me, and you get the live support from me with these private group coaching sessions. If you're interested in that, if you email us at support at milewalk.com. Uh, we'd be happy to give you the the hundred dollar discount, and then you can join us tomorrow. You're not going to get big fanfare, or a lot of emails from me on this. It's just tomorrow at this time, uh, at the eleven o'clock time slot. So kind of midday, and if you can't make it, we record it for you. I have a, I have a like a digest for you in the morning, but it's you know it, it you're not gonna you're not gonna see a lot of, of of promotion on this. So if you're interested, let me know. Nikki Rose, your resume coaching has really helped, but it's still a struggle finding the right job that pays a decent wage and a challenge to connect with the right boss. Nikki, get in the job search challenge. The job search challenge is a free course inside the Mile Walk Academy that we give you. It's got the five videos that will help you with that. My, how are you? Thank you for that. Ian, question, best way to target list of potential employers? Ian, I have a, I have a, uh, a video on how to create a target company list, and I would also tell you to get in the job search challenge. Uh, all you need to do is go to the Mile Walk Academy page, scroll down to the challenges section. There are two there. There's one that's a job search challenge. There's a, one that's master your craft challenge, which is a nine day challenge. It's pretty cool. Carrie, happy birthday to me. Thank you. What? Today's your birthday too? And it's 9 p.m. in Australia. Thank you for that. We have a lot of Australians in the Mile Walk Academy. I really love my Australian friends. And I know a lot of times when I do these at 11 uh, Central, it's you know it's midnight, or they call it the zero hour. Okay. So wait, Carrie, this is great. And Carrie, for staying up late, we got to give you a course. All right, Carrie, email support at milewalk.com. Let me know if you want my resume writing workshop or you want my interview collection, or if you don't want those, if you want my goal setting masterclass, that's a $200 course, or the career accelerator, that's a $400 course, you have any of those. Or you could have $200 off the boot camp. Uh, okay, what do we got here? I will have coffee with a senior GM as a second interview. Any suggestions for a coffee meeting? Couple of things. Uh, after you get the course in the interview collection, I, you can also check out on my YouTube channel, I have a video on second job interviews. It is a beauty. Uh, it talks about deepening the relationship and deepening the connection. There are some other neat t- tips and tricks in there. I would highly recommend that you watch that. As far as the, the nature of a coffee meeting, uh, I'm assuming uh, that you, you're actually, you are actually going to physically meet the person because I know it sounds weird but we haven't been doing a lot of that lately with with the pandemic but in those kind of situations I really feel like you are uh, in a setting where you can deepen the relationship you should do all those things I pointed to in the second job interview video but this is about uh, multiple things 
You can deepen the discussion for things that you've already spoken about. The casual nature of the meeting is irrelevant in my book as far as, you know, do I behave differently? No, whether you're sitting in a coffee shop, hopefully you're in a quiet spot. Um, I would treat it just like you were sitting in their office, right? You're not, you're not having lunch or anything like that. You're just having, having a cup of coffee. But I would be looking to um, continue dialogue on things you've already talked about. So think about what you do in your first in your first session with whether it's the recruiting screen or the hiring official. The second session, in between, you get a chance to collect your thoughts. You get a chance to say, "Hey, I I, I need to talk with them more about this. I need to get clarification about that. Hey, I need to let them know that I have great skills that would really help them in that particular area that we touched on, but I didn't have enough time to squeeze that all in in the first interview. So that's one way to deepen. The other way to deepen your relationship is by expanding what they know about you in new areas, right? So you can work in multiple dimensions. You can go deep or you can go across and check off more of the boxes going across. So I would try to make sure that as I went into that you are leading the discussions either deeper or or to the side so to speak so like hey are there are there other areas other challenges that you are facing aside from what we talked about last time right and see if there are other things that you can do to to get your credentials in that support all the other things that they need ultimately it is about strengthening the relationship if you've talked to other people along the way, and you happen to now be meeting with the GM, but you talk to Susie, Johnny, Tommy, and whoever, what you also want to do in the second interview is you want to refer back to things that those individuals said using their names and talking about, hey, you know, when Susie said this, it really struck me. I was really interested in that because I'd like to get your opinion on, or I was thinking about what Tommy said, and you know, as it relates to, and it got me thinking about this project that I worked on at such and such. Okay, you are, it, it, it's in an inclusionary manner. You are pulling people in with you. It will make the GM feel like you are already feeling like part of the team. And he or she will be feeling like you are part of the team. So all of these little subtle, you know, um, undercurrents that get carried through the conversation help make them feel like you're part of the team. So that that's a that's a that's a big deal. But I would check that out. And Carrie, just let us know if you what course you would like. If you want the interviewing collection, we'll give you that. If not, you can pick one of the other ones. George, should I include job levels on my resume or keep it generic? As an example, operations support director and operations support manager. Um, George, uh, so you you can show the progression. And if you went from manager to director, there's a couple of ways of handling this. Um, so so let's, let's, let's be real clear. There are some of you who only change in terms of title. And keep, keep in mind, there's title and there's function. And they are not always, they are not always synonymous. Okay, so for example, I could be a, an analyst, senior analyst, manager, senior manager. I don't know what those people do. Right, an analyst in one company could be a financial analyst. It could be a project analyst. Could be whoever, engineer. So I don't, I don't really know what they do. So I don't know the function. I just know a title. Uh, other, other organizations, they literally call you what you are: system engineer, system admin, project manager, and so on. Okay. Now, if you're in a situation like this, like I'm an ops support director, I was an ops support manager. If the role itself, meaning the responsibilities of what you did, are different, if they're different, I would like you to separate them. Ops director, what you did. Ops manager, what you did. Okay. So like as an ops director, you might be responsible for several units with several support managers. That would be cool to see the differentiation. So company name here, title, description, bullets, description title, description, bullets, just like that. If your role didn't change, but your title changed, then go with the highest level uh, title. And underneath, you can say promoted from ops, support, manager to director with responsibilities, so on. Okay, then you list that out. You list the responsibilities in the housekeeping. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we're going to give you the resume writing workshop for free. 
I don't I don't think that you have it. So George, we'll 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 dial you up. But but for everybody else, that's the way I would go. Because if you're if you don't have a, an ability to separate your bullets, your achievements, and your housekeeping data as it relates to your title or function, then just commingle them. But if you can differentiate, then show the progression. So George, email us at support. We'll get you the resume writing workshop, which goes through this ad nauseum. Okay, hope that helps. Heather Steiger, how are you? Jim Keen, I made a mistake, accepted a position, then turned it down. I'm unhappy with the job I took instead. I, oh, I love this. Okay, hang on, buddy. All right, Jim, made a mistake, accepted a position, then turned it down. I'm unhappy with the job I took. I'm back job searching. Am I blackballed for ever, ever working with this company where you turned it down? What can I do with this right now? I'm going back to the, what can I do with this right now? Uh, one of my little, my favorite little Steve Harvey, who I, <laughs> I love Steve Harvey. One of, one of his expressions that I think about every day is you have not because you ask not. Right, so, so he's talking about in the grand scheme of life, we don't get what we want because we're not asking God or whatever God you worship or whoever it is, the, the universe, the spirit, the whatever. Okay, you're not asking. And a lot of us have been trained that asking is selfish, right? We should be giving. But what I would say to you is how you say what you say is just as important as what you say. And the answer is always no unless you ask. So if it's me, if and only if I really want that job. Don't just assume because you got an offer that it was a good place in the first place for you. If you feel it was, then you go back and you know what I would say? I would call them. I would say, look, Mr. Recruiter, Mrs. Recruiter, I blew it. I blew it. You know what? I, I made a bad choice. Now, Let's go back. Let's go back for let's okay. Andy, Andy, time travel. We're going back, back to the back, right? We're going back in history. When you turn down an offer, okay, you need to be polite. You need to explain. You need to do do certain things. Now you accepted it, then rejected it. That's 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 bad. That's really bad. Okay, so you're gonna have to explain to them. Uh, why that occurred and say, look, you know what? I know it looked, it looks horrible, but I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm falling on my sword here. Uh, you know, is there any possibility that you would consider? I would, I would, I would ask that. Is there any possibility you would consider, uh, revisiting this with me? Then my question would be, okay, you know, help, help me understand what happened. You need to be very forthright in giving every ounce of information that they ask for. Why, why didn't that work out? Here's what I would ask you. Why didn't that work out? What, what, what was it that you discovered? Because now I'm thinking about, well, hang on. If he discovers that here, then that's going to be bad. Um, okay, what, what makes you think that you, know, you, won't, you won't do this again to us? Right? They're gonna, you're going to go through the process. And you just need to say, you need to have an answer for all those questions. So I don't know. I'm a pretty magnanimous guy. right? If, if, if you came back to me, and I really, really liked you, I think everybody should be given a second chance. But how, how I, don't, I didn't see the in, inside of how you communicated everything. If you, if you, if you did it rather professionally, I believe that they, that they would take you back. I have, uh, in my job search boot camp, the boot campers have an opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. And with that coaching session, I coach somebody who, who this happened to. And there was, there was, he got an offer, he, he thought about it, he was going to take it, then he rejected it, stayed with his current company. Then, how about this, that company kept pursuing him, created a new job. He went through, we went through like eight, ten weeks of interviewing some more. He gets an offer, they're pressing him to accept and something else came up. So he accepts it the second time. And then he has to call him and tell him, I'm not moving across the country for you. But the way we handled it, we did it so that the, the woman who 
was on the receiving end of this, appreciated the rationale, recognized what he and his family had to go through. There were some extenuating circumstances. And I'm guessing if he called them back, they would take him. Right. So I don't like every situation is a little unique. But I think if you go back and you are forthright, then I think there's a possibility. And I think at a minimum, you should give it a shot. Always give it a shot. Try that. Okay. How are we doing here? 908. Got a bunch of you on here. God, I just, you guys are so great showing up to my birthday thing. Nancy Griffin, thank you. Trying to get my 26 year old son to listen. He needs a mentor. Awesome. I, you know, I think one of the greatest compliments anybody could ever give you is, would you help my child? And I, 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 I mean that, like that, that somebody has faith in you and trusts you. So if any of you, if your friends ask you to speak to their children, that is the one of the highest forms of compliment. All right. Ihaz, I had two interviews with the company. It's been radio silence for two weeks. Should I follow up to get a formal rejection? And if yes, how to do it? Okay, uh, two interviews, radio silence for two weeks. Should I follow up to get a formal rejection email? And if yes, how? So one of the things that I would say is two weeks, while it seems like an eternity, is not that long of a period of time. I don't know what it is that they recommended that you do at the end of the interview, the last one that you had. There are three things that you always need to get. What's the next step? By when do you expect that to occur and who's going to contact me? All three. You need to go three for three. And without going into all the details in the warehouse and the what fors and all that good stuff, uh, I think the easiest thing to do and the nicest thing to do is just to give you the interview collection mastery where I have an entire video and session on interview following up. So he has, can you, he has long air. Can you email us at support at milewalk.com and take that course and check out that video uh, because I don't, have, I don't have that stuff anywhere else. And if you don't want that and you want to get in the boot camp, we'll give you 200 bucks off, uh, off the boot camp. So, so let's do that. And then for everybody else who's not getting that program just yet, uh, I, would, I, would, I would email them and say, hey, after seven days, I wanted to follow up. So that was seven days ago. I want to check in again. Uh, just to see if there's any update on this. I wouldn't ask for a rejection email. We have no idea what's happening. We have no idea if the hiring official has been traveling. Who knows? But if you if you would have known what's next, by when, and who's going to contact me, uh, that, that really helps you figure out what you should do. And without knowing any of that, it's hard for me to tell you exactly how I would play it. But at this point, if it's been two weeks, I would email them and say, hey, I just wanted to check in. Um, can you let me know? If there's any update on the position, uh, if you don't know if there's any update on the position, would you could you let me know when you think you might have an update? Give them a call to action that requ- that theoretically requires them to respond. So you want to give them something, but just send us a, send us an email at support. We'll give you the course. Uh, Karen, you've written eighty two companies and th- only three interviews. You asked me a yes or no question, and the answer to that is yes, that's unusual. So I would send you back to module five, so session five of the job search challenge, and I would have you go through the 50 minutes of troubleshooting. So are you identifying the right companies? Are you identifying the right person? Is the is the networking template copy writing accurate, powerful? Does your resume align? There's a number of steps that I would go through without knowing, uh, without knowing who you're targeting, what you're saying, what the resume looks like that you are actually sending them for what the position is. Yes, that's unusual. You should be going somewhere on the order of one for seven. You so with with 82 companies, you should have something like 11 or 12 or 13 or 15 interviews. So that that's the stat I would give you. All right, hope that helps. Check that out. (laughs) I do. Let's see. Robert, thank you. Mike, thanks for that. Eric, thank you for that. 
Quentin, I left my last, oops, sorry. I left my last company in March and I've been looking during COVID. It's hard. What should I show on LinkedIn? Appear like I'm working here or showing an empty gap. Okay, Quentin, this is a great one. Thank you for this coming at us from LinkedIn. Um, so I have, I will give you an it depends. Now, on your resume, if you're circulating your resume and you've been out since March and now here we are in August, almost September, I would end it in 2000 and I would end it in 2020. Okay? Now, if you're using months, you can end it in March 2020 if and I don't know how long you've been working, but if you've been working 10 years or so, then I would I would have only years on my on my resume. Now, on my LinkedIn profile, it has been, you know, six months, five months, whatever it is, uh, it's not the end of the world if you leave it to present. I, I don't really care. It's not a legal document. And if, if, if you engage with somebody, you could just say, hey, I recently left You know, when, when COVID hit. Um, my LinkedIn profile still has me there. It's not, recruiters get it. They don't, they're not gonna care. If somebody's on the phone with you and you're gonna let them know that, they're not gonna care. If they're on the phone with you, they actually, they, a lot of them are gonna be happy. To be honest with you, that's gonna be their first reaction. It's not like, well, you know, recruiters understand that people don't want to show that gap. But if they really like your credentials, 95% of them aren't going to care. I can tell you that. That's a recruiter talking. I, didn't, I never cared not one bit if somebody said, well, actually, I'm no longer there. Great. Okay, make, make me easier. I don't have to give you the hard, hard push sell, right, kind of thing. Now, if you want to end it at March, that's okay too. I don't really think that this particular item is going to sway one way or another. One thing I would not do is I would not. All y'all, do not put that stupid green circle around your faces, okay? You're not doing yourself any favors. Don't put open to, open to work, ONO, open to new possibility. Don't put any of that stuff on your, on your profile, on your LinkedIn profile. I got all kinds of videos on that. So I, they're on my Instagram channel. They're on my. They're different ones on my YouTube channel. But I would. I would not be worried about the about the gap there, Quentin. I really would not. All right. And you know what? Can we? Do you? I don't know, Quentin. I don't know if you're in my programs. Can you email support? We'll give you the resume writing workshop. Ah, Marissa wrote. Okay. You see this? This is my niece who just got her driver's license. So proud of you. Uncle Annie loves you, honey. I'm so sorry about this pandemic because otherwise I wish I would take a trip to California and see you. I really would. And everybody else from the fam chat who was on the session. Libby. Okay, any networking tips given the current remote world? So Libby, on this one, I would search my YouTube channel for networking. I give you business networking tips, I give you job search networking tips, I give you job search networking copywriting tips for emails to open intros. Now, if it's me and I'm job searching right now, I'm going to Andy's YouTube channel or I'm going to Andy's boot camp if I can afford it or feel that the investment is worth it. And I am, I am doing everything the same just like there wasn't a pandemic, okay? It's true. And networking can be done on the phone or on Zoom if you really get to a person who wants to spend that kind of time with you. But most of them, you don't need to. Most of them, you don't need to. You need the facilitation of the networking right now if you're doing it in a job searching mode. So I would just, I, I, would, I, would, I would lean on those, I would lean on those videos and I would do the same thing and then I would decide if I wanted to Zoom up or coffee up or martini up or happy hour or whatever you know, on the video chat. Landry, just started in a voluntary position this week. How can I make it through the full-time job in four months? I'm not quite sure what you are, uh, I'm not sure what you're asking me here. Just started in a voluntary position this week. How can I make it through the full-time job in four months? I, my friend, I am, I'm not actually sure what you're asking me. If Is it a, uh, are you talking about you know what? I'm not sure what you're asking me here. So if you clarify, uh, I'll have my trusty partner, Kara, slack it to me. And are, are you asking how, do, how 
you know, you, you've given yourself four months to, to search and now you're volunteering, so that's chewing up some time. One thing, and Larry, I don't know if this is what you're you're getting at, but I I would I would like to to say this. Um, you know, I, maybe it's my birthday, or you know, I was thinking about like just some great times in my life and like things that I, I I think about the way I live my life now, and we're all we're all we're all in this weird place with the pandemic, and it's really changed things. And I know some of you are working in jobs that you don't enjoy and you want to job search. Some of you are in careers that you don't enjoy and you want to change them. Some of you have been displaced or furloughed or let go outright or whatever. And I think about, you know, because I get these questions a lot. I get them in the system. I get them from the boot campers. I get them from, from people in the programs. And you know, people say, well, how do I find the time to do this? How am I going to make that happen? And I was thinking about, I was talking to one of my high school buddies the other day, and then this story kind of popped into my head. When I was 14, so literally like 40 years ago, and I think about when somebody asks me, well, how do I do that? I don't have any time. When can I job search? How can I learn how to change careers? I want to open up a business and all that good stuff. And this is what this is what's now recently been going through my head. When I was 14, I was about I just turned 14 and I was just going into high school. I literally I turned 14 like right on the first day or something. It's like probably like my birthday. I'm going to school, and I before we go to school, we get these, we get the schedule. And I went to this this parochial all boys high school and a lot of type A's. There was like 365 kids that started and only 244 finished. So one out of three kids couldn't make it through four years to graduate from this, this high school. It was like a thousand boys in the school at the time. And so I get my schedule and it's like uh, 02 to 08, 02 period to 08 period. And two of those periods, one was gym and one was lunch. So I had five classes. I was like, 02, what the heck is this 02 thing? And so I, I go to school. I'm there for about a, a week or so. And probably like right after Labor Day, I uh, was waiting for a buddy of mine. I had a few minutes to kill, and I happened to be on the floor where the principal's office was. So I meander into the principal's office, and I walk in there, and I, I said to this guy, I said, hey, uh, you know, hey, I, I got a question. He says, hey, young man, I'm happy to help you. So my name's Andy. I'm a freshman. Um, I got a question about, you know, I got my schedule here, and this 02 period where I show up for school starts at 848. I have no idea why it started at 848. Maybe they needed two minutes of roll call or something. But um, how, what's 01? Like, what, why doesn't it start at 01? And the guy says to me, oh, well, that's for, that's for, um, there are classes that happen in the first period. I said, well, how come I don't have one? He says, well, those are like the extra classes, like the advanced classes that, that, kids will take. So advanced classes, what do you mean? He says, well, you know, like the really ambitious kids, they like to take this extra chemistry or biology or these other classes that we don't normally offer during the regular hours. I said, can anyone take those? He says, yeah. I said, well, can I take those? He says, well, sure. If you want to sign up and next semester, you can start. So now, okay, now the hamster's running, right? Like now I'm moving. So now I'm thinking, well, the ambitious kids show up at 8 o'clock for the 01 period. I says, hey, I have another question. He says, sure. I says, is there a zero period? Like, is there a some, what, like, it, are there classes before the first period? He says, well, no, there's no teachers. Nobody comes in. Nobody comes to the school. And, right, there's no, there's no classes. I said, well, how early is the school open? He says, well, Usually the facility guy gets here about 5.30 or quarter to six and they op he opens the building and some of the swimmers come because they have swim practice in the morning. I said, can anybody come in, in the building? He says, sure. I says, well, can I do, what can I, can I do anything I want? Is, that, is the weight room open, like the strength training room open? He says, yes. How about the basketball court? He says, yeah. I says, there's a batting cage in the gym that's on the edge of the, can I use the batting cage? Because, you know, I'm going to try for the baseball team. Yeah, sure, if you can get somebody to, you know, feed you the balls, and it's like, don't worry, I, I can get somebody to come. So let me get this straight. I can get in this school at 6 o'clock. I could strength train. I could run up and down the basketball court. I could hit baseballs. I could shower, take an extra class, and then everybody else starts? He's, that's right. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. 
He says, well, I'm not going to be here. It says, I, I know it was a figure of speech. I don't expect I'll see many people here at six o'clock. So I go home. I said to my mother, hey, mom, great news. I'm going to take an extra class at school. It's at eight o'clock. I could take an extra. She says, oh, that's great, honey. I said, mom, that's not even the best part. You get to get up at 530 and take me to school in the morning so I could work out there. She says, well, really? Well, why not after school? I said, well, mom, silly. Don't be silly. That's, that's for homework. You get what I'm saying? 6 a.m., that's when you look. 6 p.m., that's when you look, right? That's when you figure it out. And, and you're never, the, the advancement never happens. The changes never occur between 8 and 5 or 8 and 220 or whatever it is. You want that extra stuff. You got to do the extra stuff. And, and that's how life will always be. It's not, it, it's not, it's not going to happen during 9 to 5. It's not going to happen in the regular hours when everybody is doing whatever it is that they are trying to do. If you want to make those changes, that's what it means. So Saturdays, Sundays, nights, weekends, that's when it happens. And I, yeah, I know you didn't need to teach me that, but I was thinking about this the other day about like what really do, do I go through now? And when anybody asks me that, that's what I think. I think that you need to put the effort in at the craziest of times. And it's and the only if you don't have what you want, if you didn't accomplish some goal you wanted to, there's only one thing you need to ask yourself is what was I unwilling to give up? That's it, straight to the heart. There is no other question you need to ask yourself. And we all have our limits. Maybe I didn't want to give up dinners with my family. That's okay. Maybe I didn't want to give up social outings with my friends or my golf game on Saturday or whatever. All that's okay. Maybe you didn't want to go into debt. You didn't want to open up the business. You didn't want to try extra marketing. You didn't want to, whatever it is. But there will be something that, some thing that stopped you, that you imposed on yourself, that you were unwilling to do. And so, you know, when Ashley was asking me about disappointment and I was talking about expectations, that's all you need to do is where, where did the buck stop? Where, where was that self-imposed limit that I put on myself that prevented me from getting what I wanted? Just ask yourself that. That's some cold, hard truth. It really is. So anybody who hasn't accomplished what they want, that's the reason. You, just, you know what the reason is. It isn't because the market crashed. It isn't because your boss fired you. It isn't because of any of that. There was something you were unwilling to do. What was that? And then, if, then decide if you want it bad enough. D decide if you could tackle it smarter. Decide if you could just knock the wall over. Decide if you can keep practicing. Believe me, it's the truth. And I know we got on this because of Landry or something, but it, 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 just, it just reminded me of that story. But that is the best analogy I can give you about when you want to you get up and go for something. All right, Kelly Fernandez. Let's see, where are we on time? Where have we been? We've been on here an hour and a half? Doesn't seem like any, any, any time at all. You helped, me with every, you, you helped me with every step with my job search and career change. I'm in the final stages now. I'm meeting with the team members for a lunch. Next week is the final interview, number seven, with the VP of sales. How do I really capitalize, set myself apart, and sell myself that I'm the one? Okay, Kelly Fernandez. So, what haven't you done yet? What haven't you convinced them of yet? So, is there any act that you could do in the interview that gets them to completely envision what it will be like to have you in that role? So, when I think of a salesperson, the talk Salespeople are great communicators, right? They, they can sell themselves, but I need assurances that you're going to perform well in my environment, selling my product or service to my customers who I understand how they behave and the problems that they introduce and the challenges that you're going to face and so on. You absolutely have to walk them through your first three months, so some 30, 60, 90 day plan that you put together, if they requested it, obviously you're going to have it, it, but if they did not yet request this, you need to bring this plan with them, with you, 
walk them through it and show them, say, hey, look, you know what? I wanted to be, abs I'm loving everybody I'm meeting. I want to be absolutely certain that this is the right place for me. So I went and took it upon myself to put a 30, 60, 90 day plan together. Show them the Gantt, show them the Gantt chart, show them exactly what that looks like, and then walk them through exactly what you would do and how you would do it based on what you know from the interviews that, that you've gone through with them. And you, you, obviously we want you to be humble because you don't know exactly all the ins and outs, but if they can see exactly how you think and what you would do and what your inclinations would be, I think, I think that sets you apart. The other thing is I would, I would be asking questions about you know, I would have asked these long before, but you know, characteristics of best employees, those that didn't work out, what could you have foreseen? How do you know you're not going to make that mistake with me? All of those things. You take them through that line of questioning so that through a multi-step line of questioning, you are, you are extracting out all of the items that you need to leverage to sell yourself about how you are and how you are not what they don't want and how you are what they need and, and assuring them of your operating procedures against all of those things that you, that you got from them in the interviews. And then with a 30, 60, 90 day plan or something specific that you can walk through the how to, now you've automatically moved the interview into the future where is the easiest spot for them to see exactly how you would behave in their environment. That's what I would do. I would be all over that very specific, not, not a fluffy 30, 60, 90 days, but here's what I would do. Here's how I would do it. Here's how long I think it would take me and so on. And then evidence of why you think that, that, that to me is, is the key. The one who does the best one of those gets the job. They do. It isn't about the Rolodex. It's about, it's about the, it's about the plan and the execution and knowing what you're doing. Go get them. Hillary. How do I overcome a terrible interview? Someone that spends the entire time talking about themselves and the company and only asks you one or two questions. Okay, two things here. Number one, whoever talks more in the interview thinks it went better. Now, if it's somebody who is talking about themselves, I would need to understand what the context was. Uh, for example, when Stacy, I don't, she's not here, she's on vacation, hopefully, uh, was interviewing to come to work with me at Mile Walk. I didn't sit there and talk about myself. We talked a lot about how she would do the job. But I had to share a lot of my philosophy about me and where I was going because of the nature of the job that she was that she was interviewing for and she needed to understand who I was, how I thought because then I was going to ask her to then take my thoughts, me, my voice and so on and how would you market this? Right? So like so there was a lot of background I had to give her. And then we spent a lot of time with her in simulation mode, like six or seven interviews that she went through with me that how would you do this and show me that and take my film and cut it up and all that stuff. Okay, so it doesn't, it isn't a bad sign if somebody is speaking a lot. If they're also talking with you about the company, how they fit in the company, how you would be supporting them and the team or whatever it might be, that could be a positive sign. Now, I didn't hear this person, so I don't know if this person was a total egomaniac or what, but there's, there's things you have to separate here. Is it the individual and the individual is just talking about themselves? Is it the individual as an interviewer is just talking a lot? That's a different issue, okay? And the fact that they only asked you one or two questions, I only asked Stacy one question in an interview. Take me through that. How would you do that? It took her an hour to show me, right? Kind of thing. So it... it, it None of these are like cut and dry, but what I will say is, let's just say for the sake of argument that what you mean is, hey, I've got an interviewer who's talking a lot and they only asked me a couple of questions. Somewhere along the way, I politely interject or interrupt and say, hey, you know, this is great information that you're giving me. It doesn't matter what they're giving you, right? They could be talking about themselves. They could be talking about their company history or whatever. I want to make sure, you know, obviously I want to make sure uh, that before we wrap up, you're getting whatever you need to know about me. Do you do you feel like ask them a, actually ask them a yes or no question? You know, do you feel like you're getting enough? Because I realize that I've only had a chance to share this. You've only asked me this, right? Kind of kind of thing. So I mean, I I think you you can do that. Now you went through this interview, but I don't know. You didn't tell me if they got back to you and if you got a second interview. So a lot of times 
What's really funny is we'll, I'll do this show or I'll see on my YouTube channel, we'll get these comments like yours. And then I'll say, hey, get back to me and let me know what happened. And 90% of the time, they're going in for another interview. So I don't know that, that that's a terrible interview. If they rejected you, uh, then, then candidly, I would probably just move on and not waste one thought on them. That's literally what I would do. So it, I know it's a little difficult, but, uh, but anyway, I hope that, hope that helps. All right, let's see. Beth? Oh, wait, Zippy. Annie's book, Out of Reach, is out of this world. Oh, grab this, people. It's, I do. I give it free. So just so you know how these, how these things work, I have two, two books. Well, I have three books. These two, you can have, uh, you basically what you're doing is you're, you're chipping in for, uh, I have supply costs and I have warehouse servicing fees. And okay, so those books are done by different publishers. And uh, one of the, one of the publisher, the interview intervention publisher and I, we could not agree on the cost they were going to charge me for the book. So I, I remanufactured the book and it's in a place in McHenry, Illinois, in a warehouse with people that I have now a business relationship with. I, we make many, many thousands of copies of these books. I pay for all that. Then what happens is I created the audio for you. So I literally, I read my book. I recorded it for you. We created the eBooks that work on any of the devices, whether it's computer, Kindle, Nook, um, iBooks, iTunes, whatever, which you can use. And so when we give you the book or either one of those, you pay $7, I will mail you the book anywhere in the world. So some of you guys, would cost me $40 to get you a book that you pay $7 for. So it's not, you know, it is what it is. It's literally what you would imagine. And some of you, it's, it costs less to ship it to, but still, it's, it has to be manufactured, and so I have to pay somebody to pick it, pack it, get it to the U.S. Postal Service, and get it shipped off to wherever. But you get the book, you get the ebook, you get the audio book, and then there's some other bonuses. So whether you're interviewing or whether you want some inspiration, you can grab those, uh, either of them. You can take them both, each seven bucks. That's the deal, because I want you to have it. All right. Let me see. I think you're asking them. Happy birthday, Andy Medina. Loved your wise words. I'm moving on in your last video. Thank you. Um, moving on in your last video. Medina, I have to admit, I'm not sure what you're asking me here. Um, thanks for the birthday wishes. Loved your wise words. I'm moving on in your last video, the Job Search Challenge. Could you expand on it more? I'm not sure what you mean. I really am not. Um, I, I am about... Um, so somebody asked me earlier about confidence and, you know, disappointment and how they're feeling and staying positive in their search and all that good stuff. If you do the job search challenge, it will inherently make you feel better and more confident for two reasons. When you feel more in control and focus on what you are in control of, you will naturally be happier, even if your outcomes are not what you would hope they would be. It, it's the lack of control that makes us unhappy in many situations. So the Job Search Challenge puts what's in your control in your hands and encourages you to hit a daily quota to send it out. The other thing is, because it is a more effective way to actually job search, you will get better results and you will get responses. You will get silence, you will get rejections, and you will get acceptances. With silence, you can do nothing but follow up. That's the only thing you can control. With a rejection, awesome. You can now follow up and ask for more help, ask for networking, ask for other things, ask to be sent on to whoever, right? What can I do with this right now? You can ask for more. Then there's, there's acceptances. If there's silence and there's repeated silence, move on. You are better served. Your job search is a funnel. Everything in your life is a funnel. It's wide at the top, then it gets narrow, then it spits out one at the end usually, right? What most of you, if I could only give job seekers one tip, if you just said, Andy, what is the one thing you would tell every job seeker to automatically improve their results? It's that you, as 
anybody here, anybody who is here, I don't know how many, 231 of you that are still here, my God, that's amazing, uh, that are still here with me, you are whole the way you are. You do not need to change anything about you as it relates to finding a job. About you. Wait, I chose my words correctly. I do not want you to change one thing about you. You, you, if given a choice, if you say, well, geez, I think I need to bolster my credentials. No, stop that. You need to bolster your marketing. You, you are fine just the way you are. Your problem is you are not spending enough time chasing, I do mean chasing, opportunities. There are, I promise you, every single one of you that is here and every single person who is watching this on a recording, there are employers out there in this world that will be falling all over themselves to hire you. If you are laughing at me right now, I'm going to laugh back at you and say, hey, the reason you haven't found that employer yet is because you are not working hard enough or marketing yourself effectively enough. It has nothing to do with the fact that you don't have the credential or you need more experience for this or that. To find a job, you need to market yourself better. To do that, you need to be spending more time circulating your resume. Yes, you can get your resume better if you'd like. Yes, you can get your cover letters better if you'd like. But you need to get out and get in motion and be consistent and send messages out every day to people who could help you or hire you. But applying in the applicant tracking system is applying for jobs. It's not job searching. That's not marketing yourself, right? So the top of the funnel is how many swings at the plate do I get? Well, I would say to you, how many swings at the plate are you giving yourself? This is where you focus, not in here. I got plenty of stuff for you to focus on. You need self-help, right? Or you want self-help development or you want leadership development. You want to improve in your career. The reason you ain't finding your jobs isn't because there aren't jobs out there. It's the consistency in marketing yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. If you don't, if you're shooting for jobs that you are wholly unqualified for, you're not going to, you're going to have trouble. But I'm talking about getting back to work and getting yourself moving in the right direction so that you can grow over time. It doesn't all have to happen in one day. But that's the one piece of advice I would give you is target your companies, target the people, send out your stuff. Do this every day, three a day, and it, after the end of one little business week, you'll have 15 reach outs. That should be two interviews for you if you're doing it the right way. And that's, that's my advice. right? I know a lot of people are spending a lot of time trying to put a resume together. Put the darn thing together and shoot it out and then look and see what's happening and then tune your marketing when I develop a product like a job search boot camp or my leadership subscription, I develop it, it's solid. I spend 90% of my time marketing the product and 10% of the time building the product. That is what you should be doing right now. Your, you and my, your life is the same as my life. It might look wholly different to you, but it's the same. We all have the same problems. So I, look, I don't try to convince people who are not buyers to buy my product. I, I don't do that. What do I do? I try to put things together that will help as many people so that in helping all of those people, I will attract more people that will potentially jump into the programs so I can help in a, at a deeper level and I can keep my business running. That's how you got to look at it. Top of the funnel stuff. Top of the funnel. All right. So Kara is telling me, uh, Landry my question was related to a four-month volunteering job. Okay, wait. Let me see if I can get Landry back here. Ooh. All right, so Landry, back to you. You were, you were saying that your question was related to a four-month volunteering opportunity. I love it. I want to, give, to turn it into a full-time job at the end. What can I do to get a full-time job? Landry, here, simple answer for you. We're giving you the Career Accelerator Program. The minute we get off here, you watch module one, first 90 days, module two, preparing for and attaining your promotion. Same principles apply. Okay, so you now have 120 days. That's all you need. We'll give you that. Get that course. Go through it. Actually, actually go through the whole thing. But you immediately need the first two major sessions to know what those steps are. And then that'll cover you, my friend. I appreciate that. And Medina was saying, moving on was there's no response. Just move on. They don't respond. One of those. You got, there's 7.7 .7 billion people in this world. There are companies that are out there that are run by those people. <laughs> they would hire you. They will. I promise you. 
All right. Let me see. Where are we at? Oh, really nice. Mary Wade. Andy, your genuine positive energy and true empathy make me feel centered and refocused. Thank you for being light in this stressful time. You are welcome. I feel like I have a friend in my corner. Thank you. you Mary Wade, you are welcome. All of you. Stories aside. I care about you. I don't care about anybody. I care about you. You show up. You're here. You're in my community. Do you know the last thing that I say to myself? Every single morning and evening, I go into my job search boot camp and the Mile Walk Academy programs that have support where people ask me questions. Before I do that, before I get on one of these live shows, before I go into a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, I remind myself, you, I would hope you would do this too. I literally stop remind myself and say to myself like out loud or I'm thinking whatever it but it's believe me I'm processing these people right God brought me brought me to them at this time they you need me you're asking me a question and I have to remind myself while I will never say to you I understand how you feel that is like the dumbest expression in the world I cannot understand how you feel I I'm not you Nobody can understand how anybody else feels. You might be able to understand what they're thinking and what, it, what it's like to go through a situation like that, but, but you, you don't have the same family issues. You don't have the same history. You don't have the same upbringing. You don't have the same whatever. So we all process things differently. The, two, the same scene can never be processed by two people the same way. So what I remind myself of is they need help. What's it like not to know what I know, right? What You ask me a question, there's no, like that expression, like there's no silly question. There literally isn't. You just didn't know that, right? I do this every day of my life. You're here because you need my help. So the, that is how empathy is easily processed whenever two people get together, whether it's me and 231 of you or whether it's me and just you. But every single time that, that you ask me something, that's where it comes from. And if the story, if ever I give you a story that sounds like tough love, I'm just saying, you know what? You're big boys and girls, right? This is, that's what it takes. And if you don't want to do this or put that effort in or what, I'm cool with that. I'll give you the best advice I can and so that you can operate within the parameters that you can manage, right? So, so Mary, you're welcome and everybody's welcome. And I just hope you guys appreciate that. That, it, literally, that is what it takes to never lose sight of, reminding yourself constantly. That's called perspective. That's how you make sure that you have empathy. All of you people that are in customer service, you every time you pick up the damn phone and hang up on somebody and pick up another call, you need to be going through. No one calls you because everything is great. They call you because they're in trouble and they need something. Right? So you got to think about that. Greatest skill of any customer service agent of any kind, whether you're on this help desk, for support, whether your customer care for your company's product or whatever is empathy. Single greatest skill. It's the only thing you need to look for. And sure, as long as they, you could teach them how to develop the software, f find their way around the network or figure out how to fix the ref refrigerator or telehealth or whatever it is. But you can't, you can't teach empathy. You gotta, you, you, you gotta, you gotta wanna own it. And, and you gotta remind yourself. That's where it comes from. All right, and Mary Wade, can we give Mary Wade something? Mary, email support. Tell us what you need. Paul Hayes. Andy, resume struggling with other relevant experience section. Paul Hayes. Uh, this, is a, this is a good question. So what Paul's asking is in the Andy Lasavita School of Resume Writing, there's a career profile, career highlights, professional work experience, education, and then all of you are different, so I don't really know what else to, to put here at the bottom. Some of you sit on boards. Some of you like Landry or volunteering for things. Uh, you know, sometimes you're on charitable foundations or whatever. So, Paul, in, in your case, there's extracurricular stuff, which you can decide what that is. If, it, if, if it's an assortment of things that you want to put into one bucket, okay? So that's additional and extracurriculars or whatever. That's volunteering, other things that are notable. Other relevant experience could be in the professional work experience section. 
So there's extracurriculars and things that are not work related. That's at the bottom. It, the other relevant experience would be anything that you are trying to trim at the more toward the bottom of your work history that might have been a while back that you think applies to showing employers your level of credentials as it relates to the positions or you're applying for or the companies you're pursuing or whatever. So other relevant experience could be whatever other jobs that you have that you want to get into that you want to get into your your uh, your resume and it does not have to be sequential. So by that I mean let's just say for sake of argument between 19 uh, let's call it 20 or uh, 2000 and 2020 you have all this nice sequence but then in 2000 uh, or in 1995 and you did something or 1998 you did something but then there was a job in between 96 and 97 that you really didn't was didn't apply you could say other relevant experience or additional uh, experience you know served as such and such for a prominent company such as such and such whatever did analyst work or whatever and you could do something like that it's not a required section it's just if it remember the resume is about marketing you if this other relevant experience professional experience puts you in the right light and 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 it and basically enhances your ability to market you and your skills then then you put it if it doesn't just cut the line at 2000 and drop it so you could do that I hope that helps I hope I hit the mark there thanks angel for the birthday wishes Mark Heil oh buddy you so good as you know I don't know if you're still on here I don't know what time this was uh Petra I will have a job interview in two and a half weeks for my current manager's job I am sure I will get questions on motivating staff okay can we get Petra three months in the leadership program for this awesome question? Uh, Petra, all right, I will have a job interview in two and a half weeks, and she's interviewing for her current manager's job, and she's uh, interested in motivating the staff. I feel like not everyone can be motivated the same way. And the easiest way to motivate people is to determine what they care about, what their interests are, and understand, so I have to know what you want to be motivated to do. Meaning that if you are, and because we're gonna use your example, because you asked the question. You, you, let's assume you have a team, it has a goal, but not everybody cares about the goal the same way. Somebody might say, I really care about helping our customers and that's what motivates me. Somebody else might say, well, what really motivates me about doing this is I don't care as much about the customers. That's, well, that's fine, okay. But I do care about my personal development and that's what motivates me. Okay, so what am I getting at? Well, the first thing is you gotta know what motivates people because you gotta know, I hate the expression, but you gotta know what buttons to push, right? Or how to, how to get them to react. And I, by the way, and when I say this, I don't mean in a manipulative way, I mean in a supportive way. I would like to know what you care about so that I can explain the rationale of why this is important and what you're going to get out of it. And then I need the tactics of how I can help you grow, how I can help you support the customer, how I can whatever. So when I look at motivating somebody, it has to do with inspiring them to get what they want and what they're, what, you know, the, the enjoyment. I'm talking about the enjoyment out of the doing. Okay, if somebody is incented and motivated by money, we well, then we need to have proper compensation structure to elicit the behavior we want. We need to incent them properly. Give you a great story. We, um, I was a angel investor in a company a number of years ago. And uh, the company was like five guys in a garage and then we grew it and then I sold my membership interest. I served on the board. We did some recruitment for them. And we uh, uh, had this opportunity. The CEO approaches the staff and says, um, we, we've got these incentives that if we hit this particular deadline in this quarter for this client, then there's a big, there's a big bonus, okay? Now, everybody in the company has what was called a PIU, a profit interest unit. It's, they're like a shareholder. So Petra, you own 10 shares. 
and then the PIU, the profit interest unit, is given a designated value, $10. You own 10 shares, $10, and then when we hit our, our target revenue, the 10 bucks kicks in, and you get the $100 incentive. Now, the CEO says to the staff, hey, tell you what, I could hire more people and make it easier on you to hit that goal, and then your profit interest unit is going to be worth a little less, or you guys could work overtime we don't have to pay for any extra people. And if you hit the deadline, and this is like an exponential thing, then what do you want to do? Now, in motivating people, people like choices. You can, I can hire somebody, can help you get hit that deadline. You could do it on your own, collect a bigger bonus. Guess what they chose? Don't you dare hire anybody, we'll get the work done. Okay, like there's many different options and levers for you to pull. But three things always contribute. What is it that you want? Tactically, how can we achieve it? And what's the reward? Okay, what is the reward and, 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 and the choice? Those things always incent people. They do. And so your, your answer is going to need to cover those, those components. But it, I need to know what my people are thinking and what they're interested in. I need to tailor my uh, direction and tactics to what resonates with them, right? Some people need the guidance and the kick in the butt. Other people need, no, I trust you and go, right? It, that's how it is. Everybody's a little different. But you're, you, you are, a big part of leadership is about the, the leader gets the team to behave individually better than anybody by themselves could, right? I inspire you to do more than you initially thought you could without my inspiration. And, but the collective goal of the team needs to be met. So in order for me to get everybody operating at maximum capacity, I have to approach each person as an individual, not as a team, even though there's processes and protocols in place. So all of that stuff has to be included and is a big part of, of being a great leader. So I hope that helps and I hope you enjoy some of the leadership program. All right, folks, I have got to get rolling. Otherwise, I'm not going to get my three-hour run in for my horseback riding. Um, okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Click the thumbs up button. Let me know. Wish me happy birthday. Just click the like button, and I'll know, I'll know you're wishing me that. Um, if you are interested in the resume workshop for 97 bucks before it goes to 297 grab it. If you want to get into the job search boot camp, let us know. If you are anybody who I gave a course to today, uh, you know, support at milewalk.com. Let us know who you are. Reference the handle. You can use that as a, as a discount on the boot camp as well if you don't want, if you want to go all the way up to the big course. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and try to finish out my birthday in fashion. I hope to see you all uh, somewhere over the course of the next few days. Tuesday next week, we've got a, uh, I've got a, a, a video that I'll release for you. On Thursday next week, regular live office hours. The following Thursday, I've got How to Build Your Personal Brand. It's a special event. Make sure to sign up for that. You're going to get a great, great workbook uh, that's going to outline how to build your strategy and implement your brand. So I hope you appreciate that. And uh, just great to see everybody. It really is. And enjoy, enjoy my birthday and whoever else's birthday it was. And oh my goodness, Mia Lasavita, hey to you. I, I do I do see you, my dear. I, my, boy, that fam chat really must have kicked in. And for anybody who's here who I didn't get to, if I know you personally, shoot me a text. If not, send me an email. Otherwise, I'll see you all soon. Take care.